Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Do you like the shorter hair? I love the shorter hair. Much less responsibility. We're here for words of encouragement, so let's go into that. And unfortunately, yeah, it didn't start off along those lines. It's really not going to end along those lines either. Judges chapter 11, the story of Jephthah the Gileadite. And so, yeah, he, he done goofed. He done goofed. He's um <clears throat> he's fighting against the Ammonites. He has a great victory. And he makes this this vow. He makes this swear. And then I need to find it. That's so bad. Here we go, verse 30. And Jephthah made a vow. Way for being prepared. And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord and said, If you will indeed deliver the people of Ammon into my hands, then it will be that whatever comes out of the doors of my house to meet me, when I return in peace from the people of Ammon, shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up as a burnt offering. He wins! Yay! Then go down to verse 34. When Jephthah came to his house in Mizpah, there was his daughter coming out to meet him with timbrels and dancing, and she was his only child. Besides her, he had neither son nor daughter. And it came to pass, when he saw her, that he tore his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, you have brought me very low. You are among those who trouble me, for I have given my word to the Lord, and I cannot go back on it. So she said to him, My father, if you have given your word to the Lord, do to me according to what has gone out of your mouth, because the Lord has avenged you of your enemies, the people of Ammon. Then she said to her father, Let this thing be done for me. Let me alone for two months, that I may go and wander on the mountains and bewail my virginity, my friends and I. So he said, Go. How many little girls dream of being brides when they grow up? Of being a good man, of having, you know, not a perfect life, but, you know, a decent life, a loving husband, raising kids. So he said, Go. And he sent her away for two months, and she went with her friends and bewailed her virginity on the mountains. And it was so at the end of two months that she returned to her father, and he carried out his vow with her, which he had vowed. She knew no man. And it became a custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel went four days each year to lament the daughter of Jephthah the Gileadite. Talk about extreme. Obviously, the Lord doesn't delight in human sacrifice. The only human sacrifice he ever wanted was that of his son, Jesus. That was the one perfect sacrifice. That was not it. They were commanded to redeem all of their firstborn, not kill them. Should Jephthah have done that? Was he wrong to do it? Should he have maybe just sucked it up and said, Okay, I screwed up my vow. I forfeit. I guess they forfeited their own lives if they didn't keep their vow. I don't know. The Bible doesn't really say what happens. I'm guessing it sounds like they would give up their own life. Type in the comments. Tell me what you think. Man, this story alone is good enough reason for Jesus to say, the old, in the, you know, in the old covenant, it said, if you make a vow to the Lord, you got, you got to keep it. But I say to you, make no vows whatsoever. Let your yes be let yes. Let your no be no. Anything else is of the evil one. My gosh, if that verse or verses wasn't enough for Jesus to think that, I don't know what is. So be careful with what you with what you promise to the Lord. Don't make any vows. Keep your word and be very careful with your words. It's more of a warning than words of encouragement, but both are good. Uh, rebuke is the way of life, as Proverbs says. I love you guys very much. Thanks for watching, and God bless.